For more than 40 years, the global aviation industry has been locked in what feels like a two-player video game, Boeing versus Airbus. Every single large passenger jet in the sky, from New York to Nairobi, came from one of these two giants. Airlines had no real choice, governments had to play by their rules, and even global politics often bent around them. But 2025 just threw a twist into that story. China's homegrown jet, the C919, is no longer just a prototype locked inside test hangars. It's flying real passengers on real routes inside China. That alone was historic. But here's the real shock. Vietnam has hinted it might become the first country in Southeast Asia to open its doors to the C919 even before the United States or Europe grant it certification. Why is that such a big deal? Because aircraft aren't like smartphones, where you can just buy the newest model if you like it. A plane needs certification, a stamp of approval from regulators, before it can fly internationally. And whoever controls certification controls the market. If Vietnam jumps first, it could trigger a domino effect across the region, challenging decades of Boeing Airbus dominance. So the big question is this. Are we watching the very beginning of a new three-way battle in the skies? One that could rewrite not just airline economics, but also the balance of global power. To understand why the C919 and Vietnam's decision matter so much, we need to look at the history of the skies. For decades, two names have completely ruled the commercial jet market, Boeing from the United States and Airbus from Europe. Think of it like a global supermarket where there are only two brands of rice on the shelves. If you're an airline, whether you're based in Africa, South America, or Asia, you've basically had to pick between these two. Boeing with its famous 737s and 787 Dreamliners, and Airbus with its A320s and A350s. This duopoly didn't happen by accident. These aircraft are insanely complex machines, each one made up of millions of parts costing billions in research and development. Smaller competitors tried in the past. Russia, Brazil, even Japan attempted to enter the large jet market, but one after another they failed to break the dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Either their aircraft couldn't meet safety certifications, or they were too expensive, or airlines simply didn't trust them. And because Boeing and Airbus had the world split between them, they could lock in long-term deals with airlines and governments. This gave them enormous leverage. Airlines sometimes waited years for delivery slots. Prices were high because there was no real competition. And if politics got involved, like Washington pressuring a country, Airlines often had no choice but to follow along because there wasn't a third option. That's why the arrival of China's C919 is so disruptive. It's not just another plane. If it passes international certifications and gains adoption, it would break a monopoly that has controlled global aviation for nearly half a century. When Comac finally launched the C919, many outside China were skeptical. Was this just another prototype that would never see real service? Would it end up like Russia's Sukhoi Superjet, used only at home and shunned abroad? But then something surprising happened. The C919 started racking up wins fast. After entering service in 2023, orders for the aircraft exploded. In less than five months, Comac had secured over 1,000 orders. By 2024, that number had crossed 1,500, a pace that even Boeing and Airbus would envy. And this wasn't just paper contracts. The C919 was actually flying. Within just over a year of operations, it had completed more than 4,700 commercial flights. It logged over 20,000 hours in the air. And most importantly, it carried more than 700,000 paying passengers, real people boarding real planes, not test dummies in a lab. Those numbers prove something critical. This wasn't vaporware. Airlines, at least in China, trusted the jet enough to put it into daily service and passengers were stepping on board without hesitation. For a brand new aircraft, that kind of credibility doesn't come easily. But here's the catch. If the plane is performing, why don't we see it everywhere yet? Why aren't airlines in Europe, the United States, or even Southeast Asia filling their fleets with C919s? The answer has less to do with performance and more to do with regulation. Here's the key thing most passengers don't realize. An aircraft can't just be built and sold like a car. To fly internationally, it needs what's called an airworthiness certificate. Think of it like a passport. Without one, the plane is basically grounded. It can only fly in its home country. But with certification from major regulators like the United States FAA or Europe's ESA, 
the jet is free to cross borders and operate globally. And these certifications aren't a formality. Regulators go through every single detail, safety systems, engine performance, flight control software, even how the plane reacts to extreme weather. It's an exhaustive process, often taking years. That's why airlines trust these seals of approval. They know the aircraft has been scrutinized to the highest standards. Here's how powerful these regulators are. More than half of all commercial flights worldwide rely on aircraft certified by the FAA. ESA's influence is nearly as big, covering most of Europe and many partner countries. When they say a plane is safe, the rest of the world usually follows. When they stall, the world waits. So for COMAX C919, getting that certificate is like winning the golden ticket. Without it, the jet's market is stuck inside China. With it, the doors to the global aviation market swing wide open. Even though the C919 has proven itself in China, Western regulators have been cautious. Some would say deliberately slow. The official reason? Concerns over safety and the use of non-Western components, like engines and avionics. On paper, that's fair. But honestly, the pace of the review tells a different story. Europe's EASA has openly said that the certification process for the C919 could take several years. That's not just a delay. It's a strategic bottleneck, keeping the plane out of the European market for as long as possible. Meanwhile, in early 2025, the Pentagon put COMAC on a so-called military enterprise list, further complicating access to United States parts, technology, and support. The result is clear. Despite C919's safety record and operational success, it faces regulatory roadblocks that Boeing and Airbus never had to deal with when they entered the market decades ago. These delays aren't only about safety, they're about protecting market share, maintaining the duopoly, and keeping a competitor at bay. So if the United States and Europe are stalling, who is willing to break the pattern? That's where Vietnam comes into the picture, surprising everyone with a move that could change the regional aviation landscape. At the start of 2025, Vietnam did something unexpected. It began signaling that it might allow Chinese-made aircraft, including the C919, to operate in its skies. This is huge, because Vietnam has traditionally relied on Boeing aircraft and maintained close aviation ties with the United States. The Vietnamese government didn't just make a statement. On the same day it announced potential regulatory changes, the deputy prime minister met with COMAC executives in Hanoi. COMAC presented the technical advantages of its aircraft, not only the C919, but also other models like the C929 and C909. The message was clear. Vietnam is seriously considering opening its airports to Chinese jets. This is more than a regulatory footnote. It marks a potential first step for the C919 to enter the Southeast Asian market, a region with rapidly growing air travel demand. Vietnam could become the first country outside China to grant a formal flight permit for the jet, signaling trust in its safety and readiness for commercial operations. But why would Vietnam take this bold step, seemingly ignoring the hesitations of the United States and Europe? The answer lies in something much more practical and urgent. Vietnam's aviation industry has faced serious challenges since 2023, putting the country in a tight spot. One of the biggest problems has been engine recalls. Pratt & Whitney, a major United States engine supplier, recalled engines on 33 Boeing aircraft in Vietnam, grounding them for safety reasons. That's 33 fewer planes carrying passengers, creating bottlenecks at airports, and leaving airlines scrambling to meet schedules. At the same time, delivery delays from aircraft manufacturers have made the situation worse. New planes that Vietnam had ordered to expand its fleet were postponed. Some deliveries now pushed beyond 2030. Boeing also faced its own production setbacks due to strikes and supply chain issues, leaving Vietnam with even fewer options to maintain capacity. For a country whose economy heavily relies on tourism, this shortage isn't just inconvenient. It's a threat to growth. Airports were crowded, airlines had to cancel flights, and the lack of available planes risked slowing the rebound from the global pandemic. Missing flights directly translates to lost revenue and frustrated travelers, putting pressure on both airlines and government policymakers to act quickly. Faced with these operational pressures, Vietnam had to make a tough choice. Stick strictly with its historical partners and wait for Boeing deliveries, or take a bold step and consider alternative aircraft that could meet immediate demand. 
The decision to engage with China's C919 reflects the urgent need to solve this capacity crunch, even if it means bending traditional alliances. Vietnam's aviation shortage wasn't just about grounded planes, it was about money. Tourism is a major engine of the Vietnamese economy and every missed flight meant lost revenue. The urgency became impossible to ignore. Reports from PYN Fund Management in 2023 showed that Vietnam Airlines was on track to record its highest revenue and net profit in company history. By 2024, its stock price had surged 179%, surpassing major regional competitors like Singapore Airlines and Air China. This wasn't just a rebound from the pandemic. It was a clear signal that Vietnam's aviation market was booming and could grow even faster if capacity constraints were addressed. For Vietnamese leaders, the math was straightforward. They needed planes. Fast. Waiting for delayed Boeing deliveries or navigating the slow, politically charged certification process in the West could cost billions in potential revenue. Introducing Chinese-made aircraft like the C919 became a pragmatic solution to protect economic growth and keep tourism moving. This isn't just about economics, though. The decision also involved political calculation. By choosing to work with COMAC, Vietnam signaled that practical needs could outweigh traditional alliances. This move balances immediate economic imperatives against geopolitical optics, a calculated gamble with potentially big rewards for both the country and the Chinese aircraft manufacturer. Of course, a critical question arises, can COMAC actually deliver enough planes to meet Vietnam's urgent demand? Early production of the C919 did face challenges with slower than expected delivery times, but that was largely part of ramping up a brand new assembly line, something any aircraft manufacturer experiences when moving from prototype to mass production. Today, COMAC has accelerated its production. In 2025, it is expected to produce around 30 C919 aircraft, with plans to increase that number to 100 per year in the following years. This scale-up is essential not only to meet domestic demand in China, but also to supply new international customers, including potential buyers in Southeast Asia. Beyond the C919, COMAC has a broader roadmap to expand its market presence. The upcoming C929 is slated for its first flight around 2028, designed as a larger wide-body aircraft for long-haul routes. Even further ahead, the C-939 is still in pre-research stages, signaling China's long-term ambition to offer multiple aircraft types to different markets. In short, Vietnam isn't just betting on a single plane. It's engaging with a manufacturer that has a clear, multi-step plan to meet international standards, scale production, and provide options for the growing needs of the Asia-Pacific region. This makes the partnership not just feasible, but strategically promising. Vietnam's potential approval of the C-919 isn't just a one-off event. It could create a ripple effect across the entire Southeast Asian aviation market. When one country demonstrates that a new aircraft works safely and reliably, neighboring nations often take notice. This is called the demonstration effect. The Asia-Pacific region is set to be one of the fastest-growing aviation markets over the next 20 years, according to the International Air Transport Association. Airlines across ASEAN are looking for reliable, cost-effective solutions to expand their fleets. Seeing Vietnam embrace the C919 could make these airlines consider Chinese aircraft as a viable alternative to the traditional Boeing Airbus duopoly. In practical terms, this could accelerate adoption in countries facing similar challenges. High tourism demand, limited aircraft availability, or delays in Western deliveries. Vietnam would essentially serve as a test case proving that Chinese jets can perform on a commercial scale outside of China. Strategically, the move signals to the world that the C919 is ready for international markets. It shifts the narrative. This isn't just a domestic success story. It's a jet that could redefine regional aviation, offering more options for airlines, more competition for established manufacturers, and more choices for passengers. Looking ahead, Vietnam's decision to potentially allow the C919 into its airspace opens up several realistic scenarios for the region and the global aviation market. Each outcome carries implications for airlines, passengers, and geopolitics.
First, the optimistic adoption scenario. Vietnam approves full operations for the C-919. Other ASEAN carriers take notice and start trialing the aircraft, boosting orders and establishing COMAC as a credible regional player. This could spark wider acceptance across developing countries in Asia and beyond. Second, a slow, regulated rollout. Vietnam permits only limited operations while ESA and the FAA continue their strict certification timelines. The C-919 would grow slowly in niche markets, giving COMAC time to prove reliability, but keeping Western-dominated markets largely untouched. Third, a production bottleneck scenario. COMAC struggles to meet delivery targets despite Vietnam's urgency. Airlines remain short on aircraft, and the economic benefits of adopting the C-919 are delayed. This could force Vietnam and others to maintain reliance on Boeing or Airbus while waiting for supply to catch up. Finally, certification domino and geopolitical pushback scenarios. Vietnam's approval could pressure other regulators to follow suit, but it could also provoke U.S. or EU resistance through political or logistical means such as restricting spare parts, maintenance support, or influencing allies. These scenarios highlight the delicate balance between commercial opportunity and international diplomacy. Vietnam's move isn't just about buying a plane, it's about rewriting the rules of aviation politics. For decades, Boeing and Airbus enjoyed a near total grip on the skies, but now the C-919 is carving out space in one of the fastest growing aviation regions on Earth. The combination of urgent demand, proven safety, and rising production means the duopoly is facing its first real challenge in a generation. If Vietnam goes through with its decision, it will serve as proof that the C-919 can succeed outside China. That alone would shift perceptions, making it harder for Western regulators to ignore and easier for other countries to follow. Airlines stand to benefit from more competition and better pricing, and passengers could eventually enjoy more choices and lower fares. But make no mistake, this is a high-stakes experiment. Every delivery, every safe flight, and every satisfied passenger will add weight to COMAX credibility. Conversely, any stumble could set the program back years. The next few years will decide whether the C-919 becomes a global contender or remains boxed into friendly markets. So here's the big question for you. Will Vietnam's decision open the floodgates or will geopolitical pushback keep the C-919 grounded outside China? Tell us what you think in the comments. Will it be rapid adoption, slow niche growth, or a political stalemate? And if you found this breakdown useful, hit subscribe and tap the bell so you don't miss our deep dive next week into China's next big project, the Widebody C-929, which could be an even bigger game changer.